Finding the perfect combination of horse and trainer is extremely rare. Even the luckiest owners have their moment in the sun, then pass the cup to their rivals. But Springfield, Ohio millionaire Warren Wright not only found the right combination, he kept finding it and created the greatest dynasty in the sport's history. Wright owned the Calumet Baking Powder Company, one of the largest companies in the country in the early 20th century. In 1928, he sold it to General Foods for $40 million and took his fortune into the hills of Kentucky. Wright's father owned a small horse farm in Lexington called Calumet. In 1932, with $40 million and an almost pathological desire to be the best, Wright set out on a mission to breed champion thoroughbreds at Calumet. Wright really changed the business. Prior to him, uh, it had been much more of a, of a sporting club of, of fairly elite gentlemen. Uh, and basically, when Wright got involved, uh, his sole purpose was to win. At first, things did not go well. Wright had plenty of money and desire, but little in the way of knowledge or experience training thoroughbreds. He was not a man accustomed to tolerating failure, and after six years of trying and failing, his money and his patience were running thin. Mr. Wright gives 103 to 105 percent to everything he does. He wants everybody else on the farm to do the same thing. If you do, you never have any trouble with Mr. Wright. If you don't, Mr. Wright does have a temper. I don't think he knew a damn thing about a horse. He didn't even know what he ate to start off with. He was a dismal failure at first. Terrible. Then in 1939, he hired Ben and Jimmy Jones, a father and son team of horse trainers renowned for training a winner at the 1938 Kentucky Derby. When he got Ben Jones, uh, he, he probably got the best. Uh, and to have Jimmy Jones, Ben's son, thrown in on the side uh, was, was just a wonderful uh, little bonus. Not long after they were hired, Wright handed the Joneses the reins of a horse that had a lot of racing potential, but not much in the way of manners. A Calumet stallion named Blenheim II had recently sired an unruly chestnut colt. Wright named him Whirlaway, but to his trainers, he was simply trouble. Whirlaway, he was a problem horse. First time we ran him was at Lincoln Fields in Chicago, and he ran right around the outside fence and won. Had big ability, but poor manners, and, and, and poor racing manners. He, just, he was a son of a gun. He was a headstrong horse. Whirlaway seemed to have it all. Speed, heart, even a catchy nickname, Mr. Longtail. But the galloping Mr. Longtail was easily distracted. He couldn't keep his focus and would frequently swerve to the outside rail of the track. Whirlaway really was an interesting horse. He had a tendency to run wide on the stretch turn, I mean, literally almost to the outside rail. Despite that, he was a very effective horse uh, as a two-year-old. But as he was coming up to the derby, it seemed like they didn't have this, uh, this thing solved. Desperate, Wright appealed to the Joneses for a solution. Somehow I'd uh, gathered up this idea of a one-eyed blinker. He could see everything on the inside, but he couldn't see out here. And we tried that on him, and that seemed to help him. One-eyed blinker. He actually removed one of the bubbles from Morloway's blinkers. Uh, on the left side, and from that point on, uh, there wasn't a horse in the country that could keep with him. At the 1941 Kentucky Derby, Whirlaway kept his focus and streaked straight to victory. He won by eight lengths and set a new track record. He then went on to win Baltimore's Preakness, leaving the field far behind, and Long Island's Belmont Stakes, becoming the fifth horse to win the Triple Crown and Calumet's first. Thanks to Ben Jones' guidance, Whirlaway had achieved the glorious Triple Crown. Calumet's first great horse was Whirlaway, who in 1941 not only won the Triple Crown, 
but then uh, added the Travers, uh, became the only horse in history to win uh, the Triple Crown, the Derby, the Preakness, the Belmont, plus the Travers. Uh, you might call it a, uh, the Grand Slam of racing. Whirl away notched up 32 first place finishes. Along the way, he put Calumet Farm on the racing map and earned Warren Wright more than half a million dollars. No man loved that boy. That was uh, licking his lips and on and he, he was really happy guy and we were too. It wasn't just the blinker that kept Whirl Away on track. The jockey who rode Whirl Away to greatness was the legendary Eddie Arcaro. Eddie had to, I, I think he deserved more credit on Whirl Away than he did uh, on any horse I've ever seen. Whirl Away was a tough baby, but, it, but for some reason or other, Eddie had his number. Arcaro had quit school at 13 to work the tracks of Northern Kentucky. He soon became a favorite of Calumet trainers Ben and Jimmy Jones. I said, get that long nose, to the banana nose guy, that our Carol had banana nose guy, and, and we got him and, and uh, got him on the horse, and, and he, he went the derby on him. Eddie was a gambler. He was a drinker, a womanizer, and he'd be out all night and, and show up, you know, kind of barely making it. Our Carol would burn the midnight oil and then head to the track at dawn. He was the best rider in the game, and he knew it. His nickname, the, the Master, and uh, for many years, he just seemed to have that knack. He could put him on different types of horses, and he'd get the best out of the horse. He had the reputation of, of being at his best when the big races came along. Eddie had a, a rough arrogance, and the fans understood that, that he was a, a, a tough show off and they they hooted at him and called him an ananos and and uh, uh, insulted him and he just loved it there wasn't a horse he couldn't coax nor a track he couldn't conquer the other jockeys were always gunning for him and Arcaro was quick to return fire as he did in 1942 at New York's aqueduct Arcaro was riding a horse named Occupation, and the other jockey was uh, Vincenzo Nordesi, who was riding a horse called Breezing Home. And uh, at one point, Nordesi cut Arcaro off, and Arcaro had to pull up. It was uh, really uncalled for, and Arcaro wasn't going to take it. Uh, he was still a young jockey, and he deliberately ran uh, Nordesi into the rail, and he was suspended for it. The stewards after the race. Uh, asked him if he was actually trying to uh, injure Nordesi because it really looked like he was. And our Carol said, um, no, I wasn't trying to injure him. I was trying to kill the son of a bitch. The Thoroughbred Racing Commission was appalled by our Carol's reckless antics. Our Carol was officially sidelined. He was suspended for getting roughed up and saying things he shouldn't have been saying. He said he was gonna, gonna like to kill that one rider. He told the stewards that. That rider cost him a race. Well, they'll do that sometimes. The fans missed Arcaro, but no one wanted to see him return to the track more than Warren Wright. 